Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to be talking about new things I've been trying. Now, these are not new things I've been trying in homeschooling. These are new things that I've been trying solely for myself. The last, you know, this is our fourth year of homeschooling, and something I've learned in those going on four years is that there's always an opportunity to learn. So I've recently really been pushing myself to try different things, and I'm going to show you what those are. I'm going to turn you around so you can see them. So one of the things I've been trying to do recently is to broaden the books I'm reading. I'm a big nonfiction reader, and that's usually what I go to, but I've been trying to push myself outside my comfort zone and try different things. So I recently put up romance books, books I tried for romance, and I'll link that above if you want to see it. So this month, something I've been doing is I've joined a two different book clubs, and I've been going to them this past year. One is a book club at my library and it's adults who read kids books so young adult middle grade and then my church book club and it's not just christian based books we read this month for example we're reading to kill a mockingbird but it's great i love the discussion i love that we have a vast array in both groups of ages and representation and you can really dive into the literature so i'm going to talk about this one first so this was for my library book club and this was a really good book, and it's something that I will definitely pass on to my daughter that I think she will really like as well. But I think, you know, a lot of young adult and middle grade books, the contemporary ones that are coming out these days, weren't around when I was younger. So I had no chance to read this type of books. And it's really cool to actually read middle grade and young adult. So I encourage you, if you haven't tried those, try those out. But it's taking different genres, different books, and having discussions with a group of people. It's really, really fun. And I do think it broadens my, the types of books I'm reading and also the types of books I'm aware of to bring into my homeschooling. And like I said, with our church book club, we're reading To Kill a Mockingbird. We're gonna be going over it the next two months. And I'm really excited. I haven't read this book since probably eighth grade or freshman year of high school. And obviously, you know, that's almost over 20 years ago. My perspective on life experience has changed greatly from that, so it was really interesting to go through this book. And I did pick up the graphic novel as well, because my library had that, because um, I want to compare the two, because my church book club is a lot of older people, and they don't think very highly of graphic novels. So I want to kind of show them and compare you know, what the original was to what the interpretation of the graphic novel was to give them a side-by-side -side comparison, but it was really good. I actually read both these in two days, so I would read a couple chapters in here and then I would go through because it's not exactly chapter by chapter the same, but I would go through and kind of compare and contrast that. So it was really fun. And again, doing that more literary analysis with a group is really exciting and interesting and intellectually stimulating. So I suggest looking outside your normal book what you would normally read and check out book clubs at your library locally in your area that's a good starting off point another thing i've been trying lately is art so i'm a person that i avoided art the majority of my life and that's just because somewhere along the way i got the idea i wasn't good at it and i'm a perfectionist at heart so when something doesn't come out exactly how i wanted to it makes me mad and i don't like it so i often avoid it you know in high school i took photography as my art credit in college, I took a digital photography, graphic design as my art credit. I specifically avoided any type of painting or sketching because I got the idea a long time ago that I was bad at those things. And especially learning with homeschool and learning about that growth mindset, I've come to realize that I need to change the way I see things, especially for my kids. They need to see me trying new things, even though I'm not good at it or I don't have a natural talent for it. I still am excited to try them. So I think that's a good life lesson. And my kids will see me doing these types of art I'm gonna show you in a minute. And most of the time they'll sit down and do it with me. So I think that's a really good modeling, you know, kind of the mindset you want in your household, but also lifelong learning. I hear that a lot in the homeschooling world, you know, raising lifelong learners. I think to do that, we also have to show we are continuing to learn new things and not scared to try those new things. So one of the things I picked up for myself, again, just for me, was the Wonders of Watercolor from Thistle and Biscuits. And my reasoning behind this is because I've never done watercolor in my entire life, besides you know, elementary school. And I wanted some instruction on it. I did see Arlene and Company's video, I'll link it down below, where she details this. 
And I think she mentions in there that they're gonna have a unit two where it's animals, which I'm super excited about. So I've been going through this. I'm about halfway done with it now. Yeah, so I just finished wet on wet, so I'm gonna be doing wet on dry. So I think it's all right. I wish it was a little bit more instruction because again, I'm a very logically minded person. So I kind of want step-by-step -step instructions with a picture and that's just you know how my brain works. This does give you step-by-step -step instructions, but I don't think they're always super clear, especially if you're not artistic at all. I definitely think it's beginners. You know, if you've never done this type of thing, it works well. But I felt like I could have used more direction, but that could just be me and, you know, my lack of experience with it. But I'll show you what I've done so far. And again, my daughter has been, my 11 year old has been joining me when I've been doing this. And I usually try to do, specifically, I make time every Sunday, I'll link up above my day in the life Sunday. I try to do something creative those days. Those are my kind of what I call days off, where I really focus on myself, turn off my phone, that types of, those types of things. So Sundays, definitely I will do it, but for the next thing I'm gonna show you, I do it more than just Sundays. But I have started to experiment with different watercolors. So I was learning swatches and different techniques like that. And then our most recent one was the bubble, the wet on wet. And then I thought this would turn out really cute. This would be really cute to make for cards and things like that. So just learning different brush techniques. One thing I wanted to point out that I got for this, so it does come with a supply list and I just printed it out and put it in a folder because I don't need to bind it. I don't need to staple it because I'm constantly using the papers. One thing I found at Five Below, because it does have a supply list and it gives you different price ranges, which I appreciate, but one of the things you need is a watercolor set. And I found this at Five Below, so it was five bucks. And it comes with all of this which I think is really cool because the sets can get more expensive. And again, I'm very much a beginner at this point, so I don't want to buy really expensive things. Although I did get myself the nice paintbrushes and the nice watercolors for myself, I did want to also get this to try it out because it was one of the supplies it needed. And then another thing, watercolor paper. Again, it gives you options. Five Below has watercolor paper. It's probably not you know, the best of quality. It is thick. I, that's what I used when I made These um, pictures, so these are different lessons I've done. That's what I use for that, and it's worked fine. So definitely check out the five below art section, painting section. They have really good supplies, but I've really been enjoying the watercolor. Something else I've been doing is sketching. So again, this set came from five below as well as in the back to school section. And you can't beat everything you get in here for the price because I was looking at craft stores to kind of price out some different things. This was a really good price. I mean, it's only five bucks and you get multiple sets of sketching pencils. You get an eraser. This is the pastels and then you have the blunting rubbing, which I've never used this before. This was actually really cool to use and my daughters joined me when we did the sketching. They thought this was really cool because we've always just used our finger in the past. So it comes with all this cool stuff, like I said before. So definitely check out five below. <laughs> so the two things I'm using for that is these. So my daughter got this in a doodle crate. That's the Kiwi Crate kind of art crafting box for older kids and I'll show that in a minute. And I was looking through it and I was like, wow, this is really cool. I want to try this. So I really like how this is organized and the first couple lessons are really cool because it's kind of, especially as a perfectionist, getting you out of your head, which is the problem I have with art. I get so you know wrapped up in my own, what I think it should be, that I forget that art is very personal and looks very different for each person and there's no right or wrong. I really like that the beginning lessons kind of brought you out of that. So for example, you're doing freehand where you're not looking at the paper and you're drawing things, drawing something upside down and I was surprised how well I turned out doing that and this was a really cool one too where you take the boxes and I just copied them um, so I could use the book in the future and you draw this and then you put it together like a puzzle and it's again I think especially for my you know very right-sided brain very logically minded brain breaking it down and trying to see things differently was really helpful and it's all about finding your you know art eye your artist eyes and then we used this recently in our homeschool. We were learning about lines and shapes. 
And I brought this out to even demonstrate to my girls that if you can make these basic lines, you can make other things as well, more complicated. Everything is just lines and shapes and perspective. And we use this in our lesson as well to show, you know, depending on where you draw it, shows the different perspective, you know, negative and positive space, things like that. So I've been using this and I've really been enjoying it. The other thing I've been using, I saw this on our school, Emily from Build Your Library, Build Your Library. She was talking about how she's using this in high school. And I thought that's really cool. I want to try it for myself. And again, I really enjoyed this as well because it goes over all these things. So I'm only on lesson four, but so far I've really been enjoying it. And again, what I really like about this one is it very much gives you step-by-step -step instructions with a picture, which is so helpful for my brain. So you can see here, it was telling you step-by-step -step what to do. So step one, picture, step two, and it's showing you the source. So kind of labeling what things are in your picture. This was really helpful and it's something I brought into our homeschool. Again, educating myself and learning more is making me a better teacher in our homeschool. But I'm also really enjoying it as well. So it gives you all these different um, steps with pictures and then it gives you a challenge to do, which was really fun. And it gives you examples of other people's challenge so you can kind of give a better idea. Then overlapping spheres, shadowing. This is something I brought into our homeschool as well. And then my daughter was doing this lesson recently. And then again, you can see it's bringing in different products to use for sketching because honestly, I'll be, I'll be honest, when I opened this, I was like, I don't know what all this stuff is. So it was nice to get a explanation of different things you use when sketching. So I've been really enjoying both of these books and it's something I'm continuing to do. And I'll show you a few of my sketches as well. So this is my daughter's big sketchbook. She has so nicely offered me to use it. But again, you can see some of this was the freehand drawing and this was the upside down picture, which again, I've never taken art, actual instructional art in any way. So I was really proud of myself with this. And then you can see here, here's my little otter freehand picture. And then this was the shading book that I was just talking about right here. And it's funny because my kids always say, this is this looks like a butt. I'm like, it's peaches, you guys. It's overlapping peaches, though. So that's what the assignment was. <laughs> but kids, and then they're like, oh, this looks like biscuits, hot cross buns. So it was really fun. So this was obviously the beginning of it. And is it perfect? Is it, you know, what people would consider art? I don't know. But I'm really happy with it. And the fact that I went into it with an open mind, I think is the most important thing that I was willing to try. Because I think a lot of times in art, when we shut, our down, shut ourselves down before we even start, it's gonna be that much harder to get, it's gonna be that much harder to really try to do what we're doing. If we're already stopping and saying, I can't do this before we start, you're not gonna be able to do it. So growth mindset, I've really been enjoying those. The last thing I'm gonna talk about, which I already mentioned, was the Kiwi crate boxes. So my daughter gets the doodle crate, and this one was spool knitted animals. And a lot of times we will do these together. And I think these are actually really cool for adults to do as well. So you can see this is the thing. And it often does come with video instructions, but my daughter does prefer me kind of to lead her on those types of things. So I'll kind of watch the videos and figure out how to do it. And then I'll help her where she needs help with it. So this was a lot of fun. And again, my in-laws give this as a gift, a subscription to my girls. My oldest gets the doodle. My younger one gets whatever the you know engineering one is, but it comes with all the supplies. So I'm going to show you what we made. So this is what I made. This is the walrus and it's cool because it came with all the little felt sticky guys to make your creature. So it was really just focusing on learning how to spool knit and came with the yarn and this, but this is something we'll definitely use in the future. And I think it's so cool to make these little animal guys. So I made this as a learning how to do it so I could help her with it. And this is what she ended up creating. My 11 year old, she made little matching bunny guys and they're sharing a little carrot. So it was just really fun and creative. And it's not like we have to sit down and do this and learn this. 
it was a different just exploring art, exploring different crafts, and it's really been a lot of fun. So those are the things I've been doing. I've been trying different books I normally wouldn't read, different genres, different age groups of books I normally wouldn't pick up. I've been trying sketching, I've been trying watercolor, I've been trying some knitting. So I just encourage you to really find things for yourself because it can be easy to get lost in your roles you play, whether it be you know lost in motherhood, lost in homeschooling, homeschooling mom life, all that. Really finding things that fill you up and inspire you to be creative is really life-giving and really exciting. So if you're like me and you've always avoided art, don't. It's never, you're never too old to learn something new. So I do encourage you to try something, you know, go to the craft store, pick out a project and just go for it. It's, it's been a lot of fun. So if you have any specific questions or if you have any suggestions about, you know, future art projects type things I should look into for myself, leave them in the comments below because again, I'm always trying to try new things. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. If not, thank you for watching.